Hello. Well, I have a good friend and I should say hero in the faith, <laughs> Dr. Mike McMullen with me today. And um, it's just been a pleasure and honor for me to talk to him and share his uh, story. And um, I've known him since I think I was in medical school and he was in physician residency, maybe. Right. Mm -hmm. That's right. <laughs> and then we, we you know, always had patients in common uh, through the years. And then his son actually was a basketball coach for a year with my son, coach, my son, assistant coach. And of course your wife, I think that's when I got to know her. Mm -hmm, that's right. Know your sister. Yes. Yeah. Sweet, sweet All family. Good folks. All much better than me. So, <laughs> so um, I'm just going to read first um, the reason that I'm doing this, these videos, and that's Psalm 105 verses one through five. Give thanks to the Lord, call upon his name, make known his accomplishments among the nations, sing to him, make music to him, tell about his miraculous deeds, boast about his holy name, and let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Seek the Lord and the strength he gives. Seek his presence continually. Remember the miraculous things he's done, his mighty acts, and the judgments he decreed. So I just want to Here's some of the mighty acts that God has done in your life. a lot for me. I can't argue with that. Um, so first of all, where did you grow up, Dr. McMullen? The big city of Decatur, Mississippi. Decatur, Mississippi. Yes. With your sister, Sherry. My sister, Sherry, who's now Sherry Russell, married to Randy Russell. So. Who also grew up in Decatur, Exactly right. right. So we're all Decaturites. <laughs> That's right. And then you had another sister. Another sister, Stacy, who died at a young age. She was only two and a half years old when she passed away. And I was in high school at the time. And I didn't ask you, was it a heart defect? It was a heart sister? defect. Okay. So she, uh, she was born with Down syndrome and clearly had what I know now was probably a wide open AV canal. She would turn cyanotic or blue whenever she would cry or have a bowel movement. And otherwise she was always happy and sweet, but she was never more than a baby. Uh, and she eventually passed away from heart disease at about two and a half years of age. Wow. But she was the sweetest thing. She brought our family so close together, you know, my parents and my sister and I. And so we became really tight knit uh, because of her. And I have a love for patients with Down syndrome and congenital heart disease, since that's what I do. Right. And your, your growing up years, speaking of that family unit, your parents were strong Christians and your grandmother lived with you and took care of That's you. That's right, Mama Cora. So Mama, Mama Cora, Cora. <laughs> yeah, my dad's mom lived with us. She had nine children. My dad was the youngest. Uh, my parents both taught at East Central Community College for 35 years. And so Mama Cora took care of us when we got home from school. And she was a great influence. She was my strong first Christian influence. She, we would repeat the Lord's prayer every night before we went to bed. My parents are strong Christians, so I don't have the rebellious story coming from nowhere. I, I, I've been blessed my whole life. So they were very strong Christians. We were in church every Sunday morning, every Sunday night, every Wednesday night. My dad would even read the Bible for us over breakfast every morning so that we were reading the Bible daily as a family. Things that I don't even get to do with my family these days because of crazy, hectic schedules with our lives. Right. What a great uh, uh, foundation. Yes. And yes. you went to Southern and you met this cute girl. I <laughs> did. <says this. laughs> Fell hard for a little Miss Missy Smith. So Missy's from Meridian. Okay. We did meet at Southern. She was on a date with my roommate. Uh -oh. uh, so yeah, that's a good way to start off, right? And we started uh, studying in the library together all the time and we would just sit there and talk forever. So she and I hit it off immediately. She is definitely the best part of our couple, my Aww. marriage. So she is a wonderful woman, as you know. Oh, definitely. And you have two kids. Two children, yes. So my daughter, Courtney, is 29 years old now. I may not be supposed to tell her age, but I did. <laughs> so she is a lawyer in Richmond, Virginia. She went to Washington and Lee Law School and stayed wow. in Virginia. She's single and uh, having, you know, Great. a good time up there. And then my son is 27 and he just graduated from medical school. So he is doing the doctor thing. So I have a lawyer and a doctor. That's great. He is married to a girl from USM, a girl from Hattiesburg. They have one son. So I have a grandson who's 16 months old now. His name is Slade. Oh. And they have a daughter due next month. Next so month, I'm going to be grandpa times two. That's so. great. 
My uh, grandfather name is Doc. Really clever, right? <laughs> and then Missy's is Happy, which fits her very, very well. Much so. So. Um, so you said when you were a child, you told your dad you were going to be a coach and teacher. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, eighth grade, you know, we were at school and they were talking about what you did for careers. And so I was like, man, I went home. I said, dad, I know exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to be a coach and a math teacher. <laughs> and he was like, no, son, you're going to be a doctor. And I was like, yes, sir. Sounds good to me. And it worked out well, right? Yeah. Plus, I get to coach the kids' team That's growing right. up and that kind of stuff oh, and be a teacher, right. I guess, in my job. So. That's right. But there's a different kind of teaching that you do uh, on Wednesday nights. There is. Can so you tell we, that story? Yeah, so we have been doing a Bible study at our house for the last decade um, where we'll have the kids in on Wednesday night. So it's geared towards medical students, other professional students. We have dental students, nursing students, pharmacy students, some of the OT and PT students, and they will all come to the house on Wednesday nights, and Missy will cook a home-cooked meal for them, and then they will have to listen to me teach for the next hour. So they all come for the food and the cooking and the home-cooked meal and the fellowship, but then they're stuck with me for the next hour. Um, and you said that that just kind of started um, from you taking some of those students on a mission trip to Haiti. So that was our first group. So it started when they were actually second year medical students and we had an international missions banquet at our church and I went there and I knew one of the girls because we had been on an international trip together. She was a second year med student and she had a lot of her friends at the banquet. And it turned out I knew a couple of her friends through some of their kinfolk. It was a really interesting story. And so that's the group that we started. So we started doing it when they were second year medical students. And of course, one of the things that we really wanted to do as a group was to take an international mission trip. So we decided to do that their fourth year, which was in 2015. And so they picked the But God ministry in Haiti. So that was our first trip to Haiti. So I led a medical mission trip to Haiti and they all got to serve as doctors one week before they graduated and really became doctors. So it was a wonderful trip. So we started doing that every year with the medical students and the OT students and the nursing students and the pharmacy folks. And so a lot of our group will go with us every year That's to Haiti, right. at least up until COVID struck. Right. And then what, how did that grow into, did they say, we want, we want to come to your house and do more? You, you and Missy were talking about strengthening the support of the medical professions when they're in school. Right. So that's, that's what we really wanted to minister to. You know, when I was in medical school, um, probably half of the women that came in married left divorced. Right. And, you know, and to be fair, half the ones that came in single left married. But nonetheless, it was, we it know was how hard. much of a struggle it is on spouses. And so we really wanted to be certain that we included spouses, particularly non-medical spouses who wouldn't have another way to worship or see what's going on with their spouses at work. So it's mainly singles that come, but there's a lot of people that bring their spouse, their boyfriend or their girlfriend. And it was something that we wanted to continue to try to strengthen couples marriages, as well as help the kids get through some tough years during school. So, you know, even though it was, they started as second years, they were quickly joined by people of the year behind them and the year behind them and the year behind them. So we would have groups from all four age groups and it has just grown from there. I mean, it's, it's really grown a lot. You know, normally we'll have 15 or 20 people. You know, one night we had one, Allison was the only one that was there and it was just as good because we all sat at the kitchen table. And then one night we had 72. So <laughs> it's kind of challenging on Missy to know how much food how much to prepare food. sometimes. You can kind of gauge it based on their test schedule now that I know their test schedules <laughs> a little bit more. But when we started it was when I was in private practice at Jackson Heart. So I really didn't know much about what was going on with the medical students mm -hmm. at that time. And so we would just try to prepare and we didn't have to depend on the loaves and the fishes, fortunately. <laughs> but. Uh, but Missy does a really good job of preparing food that will go a long way, and we usually have a couple of frozen pizzas in the in the refrigerator just in case. That's great. I mean, I, I'm sure that's so needed because I remember feeling like I was kind of in the in the desert during medical school and residency because you didn't have time to eat, much less sleep, much less have good Bible study, or you just felt like you didn't have enough time in the day. And, right. Um, yeah, so much pressure all the time, and like you said, the 
I, I know half of our marriages were were gone too because right. of all the pressure it puts on the person, and then they don't have anything left for their spouse. So. Exactly. So it's tough times, and we didn't. You know, to be fair, I I was not that great during medical school. You know, we really fourth year of medical school is when Missy and I got involved in the church and started going to Broadmoor Baptist Church. So that was. 1990 so we've been at Broadmoor since then but the first three years of medical school you know you just it didn't have hard. time for it it was tough I, you know I appreciate my wife more and more seeing right. what all the students go through and the students you know I, I don't they love the home-cooked meal because a lot of them are away from home Missy serves as a mother for a lot of them she's a prayer warrior so they will text her and she'll pray for them she'll meet them for coffee or breakfast or something during the week if they have something going on so she's really a, a bigger part of it than I am. That's wonderful. One, one of the um, first um, physicians that started with the Bible study said, and I'll quote from an article, the Bible study group showed me how medicine is something we should keep God in, that we should not only help people, but also show our love for them, just as God shows love for us. Um, and then, I think your colleague said, Dr. Rick Mullen is a light to these students. He has this calming presence that just makes you feel like everything is going to be okay. His wisdom is relatable and unpretentious. He has a quiet strength. Um, but one, one person asked you along the way, why do you always look so happy? What's the deal? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a great question. I, I, it, it, that, you know, it happened in college. I'd never been away from home, and I was always pretty typically a happy person, always typically smiling. And I had one of the RAs at the dorm where I was staying say, you know, why are you so fake? Why are you so happy all the time? And that kind of hit a chord with me. Obviously, if I remember it this many years later, it struck a chord. And, you know, I wish I could have given him a profound biblical answer and said, you know, because Jesus is my strength and joy and everything else will be fine. And that's really what hopefully I feel, but uh, it made me stop and think a little bit about wanting to be sincere and genuine and unpretentious to use the word that you used. Mm -hmm. So it, uh, it struck a chord with me. So what is your biggest advice to these medical students as they're trudging through all of that? Um, and really their spouses too, that might not be non-medical. Right. It, uh, it's, you know, they're gonna make it number one. Uh, they think they aren't a lot of the time, but they're going to make it. And so I usually tell them to take it one day at a time and don't get so focused on the end of the race. You know, when I'm running marathons, I can't get caught up on mile 26 when I'm on mile one. Mm -hmm. So focus on what they have to do that day and the next day and not the end and to really enjoy the journey along the way because you don't want to wake up at the end. You know, my best friends, I'm sure a lot of your best friends are still your friends from medical school or residency or fellowship. And these are the people I still run with on Saturdays and hang out with during the week. And for them to not miss the journey along the way. But it's important for them to take care of themselves. You know, they need to get rest. They need to stay in the word. We talked, in fact, Wednesday night, we talked about the armor of God and the sword of God being the word of God. And we get related it to PPE, related to COVID and the protection that you need from the schemes of the devil, to quote right. Ephesians 6. And so we talked about staying in the word mm -hmm. and staying in fellowship with believers on a regular basis so you don't get so caught up in everything else. They're your support. They're yeah. your support. And they're good kids. So, you know, they, you know, they're a lot deeper than I am a lot of the time. So they're, uh, they are really good kids and they inspire me more than I could ever inspire them. Wednesday nights, my favorite night of the week because it just recharges you to do that. And that's the other thing we tell them, to find something that recharges you and to yeah. do it, whether that's going for a run like it is for me or playing the piano or whatever it is, taking yeah. a walk in nature, walking the dog, they need to take time for that. That's great. So um, you mentioned being in a or running a marathon. Um, I, You had a bad accident in, in July of 20. 14 and actually May of 2014 was when my husband fell off our roof and we were taken to the neuro ICU at UMC and Dr. McMullen was one of the dear, dear people that came and visited me um, when I was all alone. That was not my, that was not my people, you know, yeah. 
um, I've been working over here, but um, it was so good to see a friendly face and they were so kind to come and, and check on us. And then two months later, I hear that you've had a bad bike accident. Do you want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, so I, I'm very fortunate. I'm glad Joel's doing so well because, I mean, he and I can both talk about miracles, right? Right, right. Yeah, so in July, injuries. traumatic <laughs> injuries, that's right. So in July, I went out with a, a bunch of friends from college out to Utah. I had a tough time getting out there because I tried to work up until I left, and then I got delayed in Atlanta. So I got into Utah at 3 a.m., got up at 6 a.m. We were on the mountain by 9 a.m. to get on some mountain, mountain bikes, and we weren't, we weren't mountain bikers. I mean, we were bikers, but we weren't mountain bikers. And so we were on the expert trails at Deer Valley, which is not somewhere we should have been. But I was the young, healthy guy who was in shape. So I took off wow. and one of the other guys went with me. And so I turned around when we were getting down lower and said, you know, where is everybody? And when I turned back around, I hit this stump, flipped the bike, went over the handlebars, landed right beside this big sharp trunk of a tree and a boulder on the other side landed on the back of my neck and fractured my C7. Had a little numbness here and some pain in my back. You know, you don't ever think you're hurt. You're with a bunch of guys, you gotta be tough. I got up, hit the ground again, passed out. So I ended up going down to the local first aid and waiting it out, but then they had to send a fire engine for me and then send a helicopter for me and then did emergent spinal fusion uh, immediately. I didn't know it at the time, but the particular injury that I had had a 97% chance of never moving and you know, being paralyzed, quadriplegic for life. Mm -hmm. So God looks out for fools. God was taking care of me. So I am very, very blessed. And, and, I, and also you're in Utah. And I'm in Utah. With doctors you don't know. Exactly. And, I mean, not that they didn't do a great job. It's just out of your element and your people. And That's right. It's really interesting. You know, the, the doctor that did the surgery Graham, Dr. Graham Calvert at First Baptist yes, right. had just finished his fellowship with, with him. him. His name was Brandon Lawrence. Wow. And so the guy walks in, he's like, oh yeah, you know, I know all you Mississippi guys. Graham <laughs> Calvert just finished out here. So so it's kind of cool having that connection that and, and that made us feel better. Mm -hmm. And he took great care of me. And uh, you know, I had some good friends taking care of me. So they flew me home on a private plane and I was back at the house 48 hours after breaking my neck for my first mountain bike trip to and Utah. Apparently back moving a lot faster than everybody could have imagined. I was very blessed with that. I was in a neck brace for six weeks, but I'd already signed up, you know, I'm trying to do a marathon in every state. It's a great way for Missy and me to travel. And you know, you remember a mar you remember the state when you run a marathon because it's so painful. <laughs> so uh, I'd already Sounds signed great. up. <laughs> no, that doesn't sound like that's what you want to do when you travel. So Especially I'd signed with up. The <laughs> So I'd signed up for uh, three marathons that fall. So I had uh, mm -hmm. St. Louis in October, Las Vegas in November, and San Antonio in December. And of course, I'd already paid the registration fee. So why would you let a little thing like a cervical neck fracture keep you from going? Oh so I went ahead and did those, admittedly with not the best training, um, but it was, it was fun. But I made me a t-shirt with a guy going over the handlebars of a bike saying, I do my own stunts. And then I put okay. Philippians 4.13 on my back. Uh, is that your favorite scripture? So that, that's one of my favorite <laughs> scriptures. It certainly became my favorite scripture then. Wow. And uh, so I got a lot of comments when I'm running. So I've worn that shirt multiple times. I'll change the number of marathons that I've done when I run in it. Right. And I get a lot of comments and people ask questions. And there's a lot of people who encourage me and hopefully a lot of people that are encouraged by seeing that. Well, you're a miracle. I sure. am a miracle. I will not argue with that one. That's great. But God is good. He took care of me. I was you know, never too worried. You know, uh, John Winscott works with me and he texted me that day. I said, sorry, I'm out of town. I just broke my neck. God is good. And he's like, Wait, 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 you just broke your neck? Really broke your <laughs> and, neck? And you're texting. Not a figure of speech. <laughs> exactly. So, yeah, we were going down the mountain at breakneck speed. That's what um, the guys all said. I became trauma scorpion. I also saw the rock and the hard place. Exactly. <laughs> That's exactly what it was. I was a little bit either way, and it would have been disastrous. Don't you say God was saying, um, I got to you? Yes. I mean, I have a plan for the rest. So, on that note, Dr. McMullen, what is didn't give you this question earlier, but what what is your legacy? What is Dr. McMullen's legacy? What do, what do you hope that God says, well done, my good and faithful servant? 
I do mean spiritually, not not cardiology. No, I understand. <laughs> Might have had more influence in cardiology, but no. I, uh, I, you know, I don't really run the race. Mark run the race is a that, that's a great verse for me, and I've used that multiple times. And that's really all I'm trying to do. I'm not trying to leave a legacy per se. I'm trying to just meet the needs of a bunch of kids that I can minister to in a way that is unique for Missy and for me. There's not many other people cooking for them every week. And I know they do their own Bible studies, but you know, it's nice to have somebody who's a physician already who's doing all of these things and just sharing from our heart and trying to strengthen them. So if that's my legacy, that's great. I, uh, I just really try to go through the doors that God opens for me. And he's opened a bunch of interesting ones because I've been in academics and then I went to private practice and that's where I started this ministry. But then they invite me to come back to academics. So I'm asking permission from the medical students. Is it okay if I come back to UMC <laughs> on faculty? And of course they're like, sure. And so now I have a unique role where I'm actually working with the medical students uh, as one of the deans for student affairs. So God's given me a lot of opportunities and I've been pretty good about saying yes to them. And that's just led to a lot of cool relationships. That's really neat. And it really is, you know, the medical students were so inspiring. I mean, it's just awesome to see how deep their faith is, how much they want to help others, how much they're being selfless to try to reach out to others. Mm -hmm. And yet how hungry they are for being in the word and being in relationship. Wow, that's really neat walk through the doors that God has opened. That's great. Yes. So, and what's your favorite scripture? My favorite <laughs> scripture normally is Colossians 3.23. You know, it has to be one that has the heart in it, right? So, right. <laughs> uh, so, whatever you do, do it with all of your heart as for the Lord, not for man. Mm -hmm. And okay. so, you know, I've always worried about being a people pleaser. Mm -hmm. And that verse really speaks to me about who my audience really needs to be. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And so that's uh, that's where I try to keep my focus is every time I finish a marathon, I, I give Jesus the praise and uh, pointing up all my pictures are me that's pointing right. up at the end. That's great. And I just try to go through the doors that he has opened for that's me. That's wonderful. Thank you so much. It's for my pleasure. You're too time. sweet. Thank you. <laughs>